Identify. Threat. All right, guys, Instructor Z here with Tactical Rifleman, and today we're going to be covering some Green Beret turn drills. We added the Green Beret for your pleasure, but it's just a turn drill, really. So, what we have on the range in the military is a lot of courses we go to and a lot of uh, training times that we go to the range and we just we do deliberate, boring drills that are necessary for muscle memory. So looks like a regular up drill. You might have heard that called that before where somebody gives us the command to identify and they give you a whistle or the, the command threat. You raise your rifle from low carry or, or bring it down from high carry. Engage uh, the fire selector. Engage however many times they tell you to engage. Assess after and put it back on safe and drop your rifle, right? So it's good. It builds a lot of fundamentals. You need a lot of repetition to get that muscle memory built into you. I like to add a little bit to that. So what I've seen with civilians that Carl and, and the other instructors with Tactical Rifleman uh, have taught is guys, they want the muscle memory, but they don't want the boring drills that you have to do repetitively over and over and over again for a long amount of time in that class. So we add a little bit of complexity to it. Effective complexity, just enough where we push their limits a little bit uh, make them think about safety and, and using that safety and the position that their body's in and, and allowing those fundamentals of marksmanship to get that repetition that they need to become uh, muscle memory and effective, but still focusing on those fundamentals and working that repetition without the boring, same old, same old up drill. So what we're going to be doing today, like I said, the Green Beret turn drill looks kind of like this. Um, We'll be facing either to the right side of the range, to the left side of the range, or to the back of the range at one point. And all the, the complexities that I can add into this drill uh, have to do with the carry configuration of my rifle. Could be up, locking it in this way. Could be down, bringing it up on target. It can be which foot is forward. This is also a lead up into movement. So my right foot could be forward as I'm moving, and I still, I'm not gonna adjust my feet the way I want it to before I shoot, I'm gonna shoot off whichever foot is forward or turn, in this case, off whichever foot is forward and work off of that platform. Whether it's my ideal platform or not, I'll become stable and make it work for me. So I can switch variations in feet and I can also uh, give them a different round count or a, a number or rhythm to engage the targets with. For instance, a, a failure drill or two to the body, one to the head, I can go three in the body, I can do a zipper drill, uh, starting at the waist, working all the way up to the head. I can do all kinds of configurations or rhythms that I can give them. So all those things they have to take into account. And then lastly, they have to take into account their buddy to the left or right of them as they're doing these drills. So they're really thinking about muzzle awareness and safety. They can't just get that depressed muzzle or that good hunting high carry, I call it. They have to go a little bit higher, they have to go a little bit lower in order to miss their buddy and get their barrel up on target in a safe direction before they engage. So we're covering all those bases in one drill from the instructor's commands and giving them more and more to think about and we can, we can give them less to process or more to process depending on the student and how they're performing. All right. I've got uh, the Green Beret turn drill here, and I've got a couple of demonstrators. I got our Navy SEAL Jason, I got our crusty Sergeant Major Carl. They're going to show us what to do here. And as before, if, if I got some students that are fairly new to me and I don't know their competence level yet, I want to give them through, get them through some dry runs before I let them go live. Also, you might want to hit up all the fundamentals of safe to semi with a rifle if you don't know how capable those particular students are with a rifle. Sometimes they don't realize about that safe to semi switch. Okay, so these guys are good to go with that. So we're gonna move on to the meat of the drill, which is the actual turns and the complexities involved. So right here, we've got Carl and Jason set up. They're both standing facing to the right of the range. Their target or their threat is to the left. They both are at the low ready for now. All right, missing their buddy if they're in close. Carl is missing me right now if I'm standing in front of him and they both have their left foot forward as if they were walking and they heard the bump of the night or 
notice a threat as their left foot hit the ground, preparing them or leading up to moving eventually. Once they're all set up here, I will give them the command of identify and they will turn their head and their head alone and identify their threat, identify. On the command of threat or the whistle blow, they will engage with whatever round count that I give them. For this one, going dry, but simulate a double tap to the chest. So identify, threat, bang, bang, or so forth, two to the chest. They will return to their position in a safe manner, and they'll take commands from me as far as the next configuration, which will look something like this. All right, guys, right foot forward, high carry configuration. All right. Again, going dry, identify, threat. All right, relax, guys. So you notice the way they're moving their legs, with Carl's right leg forward uh, or his left leg forward, when I tell him to identify and then I yell threat and he turns, he doesn't do a pirouette and he doesn't step backwards. Show him an example of stepping back, please, Carl. So uh, left foot forward or right foot forward and then step back. Now, with that foot, identify, threat. That works, but we don't want to get in the habit of stepping backwards if we're working with a team or somebody's behind us or we don't know what's near us that's going to throw our shot off once we run into it. I want to step into what I know, be aggressive when I'm engaging someone and step into them and get that solid platform that Carl's sitting up right there that he's just demonstrated. And uh, we'll go into more detail on that once we turn 180 degrees. So, uh, you guys want to go hot? I'm good with that. We're good to go. All right, so here we go. We're going to demonstrate hot. Go ahead and load your weapons and make them ready. All our secondaries are already loaded. All right, so for this configuration, guys, you're going to be facing this way, left foot forward, low carry position. All right, two to the body, a double tap to the body. Left foot forward. Left foot. There you go. Identify. Threat. What are they doing after? They're assessing and scanning. Did I hit? Did it work? Do I need another? And then uh, I don't like to scan for bad guys that aren't here, but Carl is checking to make sure Jason's not doing anything crazy. Jason's checking Carl, making sure he's not doing anything crazy that's unsafe. So that breaks them out of that tunnel vision briefly. All right, let's face uh, that way, gentlemen. Still in a safe direction, we're gonna go right foot forward, right foot forward, high carry configuration. And we're gonna go three to the body, three to the body, a string of three. Identify, threat. All right, one added configuration. Once they've got those down and we work through those, I want you guys to face up range, weapon in a safe direction, so back towards the top of the range. All right, and we talk about turning 180 degrees. Obviously, I don't want Carl or Jason breaking their neck to identify, so they're gonna turn their head on the command identify just to see over their shoulder and use their peripheral vision. All right, staying safe, not pointing back down there in case there was uh, people or, or anybody back on that side of the range you wanna get in the habit of good muzzle control. All right, now, a question to you guys out there. Which way do you think Carl should turn to be more effective or to get him on target quicker. Wrong. He should go towards the direction of the way his hips are open, see? So I'm standing beside you, Carl. I'm gonna do this dry myself. So if Carl doesn't go towards his, the opening of his hips, he's gonna do, end up doing a little pirouette here and essentially stepping backwards, which is also losing ground and not going forward in the direction that we wanna go where we know what's in front of us and we're not gonna bump into our buddy. So wanna go in the direction of our hips, th that our hips are open. Is open this way. Yep. Right, 45 degrees that way. No pirouettes here. Maybe Jason, I don't know. All right, so for this configuration, high carry, left foot forward. We're doing two to the body, one to the head. Watch your buddy as you turn. When I say identify, you just look over the shoulder, threat, you turn. Ready? Identify. Threat. Relax, check, come back to start position. Let's do one more, let's do the right foot forward this time. So we'll make them open, uh, they're opening of their hips towards you guys and they're gonna turn this way. Carl's not gonna flag my head even though I'm right here. That's part of the drill. 
So uh, right foot forward, guys. High carry. Go two to the body, one to the head again. Identify. Threat. Nice. All right, there you have it, guys. We've got a lot of things going on. We got fundamentals. We're switching safe to semi. We're picking up our sight. We're accounting for our height over bore being this close to the target, 10 meters. We're doing our hold off uh, high a little bit, right? And then we're working our footwork, what's going to work into eventually moving, all right? We're working our muzzle control, our muzzle discipline. We're working on tucking that rifle in different carry configurations, whether it be up or down, all those together. And then we're also processing whatever the range master or instructor tells you to do as far as engaging the targets. All those things come into play. You still get that muscle memory that we like and uh, we know helps us uh, so much in real life. And it's, a, it's fun, all right? So there you have it, the Green Beret Turn Drill. Tune in every Friday to see all the videos. Hit the subscribe bell so you can see them when they come out. And hopefully uh, you come train with us sometime. That's it for myself, Carl, Jason. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything. If you like the shirt that we're wearing in the video, you can get it in our store.